Good evening. evening. It's good to be back after more than seven years. Uh, We were here with with Lisa in 2016. How time flies. And we have a hard time uh, coming back because of this pandemic. But I will share to you uh, later. I will share to you later what has happened to us and the ministry that you are praying and supporting. And uh, I am encouraged to be here. I am going back to the Philippines next Wednesday. So this is my last prayer meeting this time, and uh, I'm thankful to the Lord I did not miss you, uh, really, because I'm at home, away from home. Thank you, uh, because I consider you as my family. The work that we have there in the Philippines is the extension of your church. So don't get discouraged if you are having a hard time growing here, because the work you are praying and supporting the Philippines is growing. I will tell you about that uh, later. But I would like to start with a prayer, and then I would like for you to watch the video, a six-minute video of our ministry. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for gathering us together tonight. Thank you for uh, this church, uh, through Brother uh, Blanche, to having me here tonight. It is our prayer that you are going to prepare our hearts to be blessed by what you're doing in the other side of the world through our ministry in the Philippines. We thank you, dear Father, for your goodness, for your faithfulness in our lives. We love you. We're going to use this one life we have for your honor and for your glory. Bless this prayer meeting we have tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you again for the opportunity to be with you uh, tonight. Uh, I came halfway around the world. In the Philippines right now, it's 8 o'clock. Thursday morning, we are ahead by 14 hours without the daylight saving time, ahead by 13 hours, so uh, literally halfway around the world. I traveled 30 hours going here, and I'm going back next Wednesday, another 30 hours with all the layovers there. I'm, I'm traveling from Jackson, Mississippi to Atlanta, Georgia, to Atlanta, Georgia, going to South Korea, and then South Korea to the Philippines. And in the Philippines, it's hot. We have uh, 70 to 100 all year long. The weather there is uh, dry and wet. We only have two seasons, the rainy season and summer, dry season. Uh, But the temperature is the same. Uh, I can wear every time this tie. Uh, And that's why outside uh, there, uh, I'm a cold chicken. Uh, it's too cold for me, and Brother Mike said he's used to that cold weather. Me, I'm not. That's why I'm thankful to the Lord. I'm here now in the south because I came from Missouri. It's too cold there. Uh, I call Missouri misery. Uh, really, uh, the, the weather changes a lot, and I'm so thankful to the Lord just to be here. The ministry is called the Living Epistle Baptist Church. It has grown. Every Sunday morning, we have an attendance of 200. That's only the youth and the adults. We are not counting children. Uh, you have seen in, our, in, our, in my video that we only have our children coming to church. We don't encourage other children to come to church because we only have one building, and that's what we use for our sanctuary. Uh, but we use that uh, sanctuary for uh, all occasions. When there's a funeral, we use that. That's also the kitchen of the church. When there are our weddings, when there are uh, baby showers uh, like that, or uh, um, any activities that we have in our church, we, we are doing that in that church. Thank you for your help. We have built that uh, sanctuary in 2015. Thank you for your prayers and for your support. And God has supplied that. I came back with another project, and I'll be telling you about it uh, a little later. Let me begin by saying, Mabuhay. It means hello and long live. Uh, My name is Izard Eisen. I am a local Filipino missionary. I was born, raised, saved, discipled, and called by God to serve in a northern province in the Philippines. We have 7,100 islands in the Philippines, but we have three main islands. We are on the north, which is Luzon, the biggest island. Then we have the middle part, which is Visayas, and the south is Mindanao, where the Muslim extremists are. The ISIS, the terrorists are there. And we would like to thank the Lord for Americans who are there, uh, helping us right now, because 
China is taking some of our islands. And praise the Lord for American soldiers who are there training our people and helping us so that China could not conquer uh, the Philippine Islands. By being a local missionary, it means my mission field is in my own country. The advantages of that are I already speak the language, which is Tagalog, and a few of the dialects. We have more than 200 local dialects there. You travel one hour, and you cannot understand their language anymore. Uh, but we have the same culture. I understand their culture. I understand the influences to our ancient beliefs and traditions by countries who took over our nation before it became an independent republic. In the video which I shared, my home province, Pangasinan, has three million people as of the latest census. One of the richest provinces in terms of votes. You see, politics and uh, elections are two of the most influential factors of a Filipino life aside from economics and religion. Sadly, it is also the most corrupted system in governance. Because of poverty, most, if not all, will, were driven to vote who can give more money before an election. It's a sad circumstance that is even a reality among the Christian folks in the area. For the last 21 years, God has led me and my family to plant a mission work in the town called Bugalion. By God's grace, he has nurtured the work and led hundreds to be saved. We have sprouted satellite mission works in different villages and nearby towns. Some prospered. We have three other churches there. And some were halted, especially when the pandemic happened. It was a very dark part of world history to us. In the Philippines, it was scary and uncertain every day, especially when all you see in the media was about the death news. We knew of people, we knew of families and friends who died because of COVID-19. And it reminded me of how it might have been when the angel of death passed over during that night in Israel. You see, the crying, the wailing, the fear, it might sound surreal to read, but this was for real. I have instances when even a relative died, and I couldn't be there to give a committal service because no one is allowed to go out. You go through checkpoint to checkpoint, you have to present a pass, maybe a tiny taste of what might happen during the tribulation. But thank God, we will not be here to go through that when tribulation comes. Amen? Amen? Two years of pandemic, how did we all survive? How did we, as your missionaries, survive? I praise God because he who is faithful with you here in America is the same God who is faithful with us. His mercy and love overflowed even in the Philippines. The good thing that came out from this with us was God raised fathers and young men in our church to lead their homes in worship on Sundays when we can have an in-person worship service. We were stopped for more than two years. When internet is not everyone can avail of and afford, God showed us that He alone is in control of everything because He is the Creator, and in one snap of a finger, He can erase mankind and this world as He will. So I wonder... What an atheist was thinking when all this was happening. Surely this pandemic screams that there is only one God that is in control. But thank God, we are still here. And may the lessons of this pandemic has awakened us all up that we are God's creation, we are His workmanship. He created us to do His purpose and to glorify Him alone. Soon, he will come, and he will come back and show the world for real. He is the King of Kings, and he is the Lord of Lords. And while we await that, shouldn't we all occupy until he comes? Let us get busy and reach the lost and snap them out of the devil's snare. I would like to thank your church 
because you've been supporting this ministry for many years now. My family is thankful for your partnership with us in this ministry. Our mission work is an extension of your church here. Amen? It was not built for me to build my kingdom. It wasn't built for my name. People there could not even pronounce my name right. Uh, by the way, my name is an American name. Ezer. Uh, he was the heavyweight champion in boxing when I was born in 1966 from Cincinnati, Ohio. And people there, when they hear my name, oh, he's an American maybe because of that name. But when they see me, they, they know I'm a Filipino because of my brown color and my height. Uh, you see, my ministry is built for people to glorify God. When people pass by, they look up and wonder why there is a cross on the facade of the church. They see people coming in and out of church on Sunday. And they see many people coming out on a Wednesday night. Our prayer meeting attendance has improved after pandemic. We average 70 to 100 each Wednesday since February this year. For a while, I thought it was only because the people missed seeing each other face to face. But it's been ongoing until now. Beloved of the Lord, mission work is not just about drilling wells or sending dollars to your missionary. It is about sowing seeds and reaping a harvest of souls for God's kingdom. Third John, verses 6 to 8 says, which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom, if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well, because that, for his name's sake, they went forth, taking nothing of the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. John was telling believers here about those who do the work for the spreading of the gospel. He was talking about missionaries. In simple words, he was urging the Christians that these missionaries told the church or those people about the love you have. Please help them to continue their trip. Help them in a way that will please God. They went on their trip to serve Christ. They did not accept any help from people who are not believers. So we should help them. When we help them, we share with their work for the truth. I remember 21 years ago, I barely raised over $100 as support from coming here. The mission board told me I can start the work because I do not have enough ammunition to go to the battlefield. But my wife and I thought even David didn't have that much ammunition except that a few tiny stones. And so we did. Today, we still don't have much of that ammunition, but uh, we are thanking the Lord because we can only trust God for provisions each month and do with, with, with what God provides. Our support is always a blessing wrapped up in prayers that our mission partners will help on to this lifeline so we can do more for God's glory. In her 21 years, this mission work has produced 11 full-time pastors and four Bible women. These were young people who got saved in this ministry and then they decided to pursue Bible college and become pastors and missionaries. They have graduated since then. They started their own families and are serving in different churches and places in the country. And we rejoice in knowing that they are out there bringing the gospel to others and the training and the values they learn from us as their spiritual parents. To this day, we have four of them that stayed as we build and plant more churches near us. You see, we can all be there in those far-flung places. We can all make the trip. We can all endure the footwalk of miles to reach those hidden uh, places. We can all be there to tell them that Jesus loves them. 
in a language they will understand. We all can be in the, fire, in the front of the firing line, but we all can share in the burden. We all can pray for the missionaries. We all can at least give them ammunition to make it through, or maybe just something they can afford to buy a bullet vest to put on. We all can give. You are so blessed here in the United States. Sadly, some of you, they just take their blessings for granted. Sometimes you don't have to trust the Lord because you can earn everything. And our blessing in the Philippines is that we thank God for trials. Thank God for poverty. And because of those uh, hardships, we really entrust our lives to the Lord. And Philippines is right now very ripe for the sharing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not like here in America. You share the gospel of Jesus Christ, you will not have time for that. Uh, Why we need Christ if we can have everything of this in life. And so we thank the Lord for for, uh, trials in life. And the Apostle Paul, I remember, he writes to the Ephesians. He commends them not as a generic church, but as the church in Ephesus, it says in Ephesians 1, 15 and 16, For this reason, I too, having heard of the faith in the Lord Jesus, which exists among you and your love for all the saints, do not cease giving thanks for you while making mention of you in my prayers. We do write newsletters to update everyone. Although it takes us longer to consolidate all that God is doing in a one-page paper to send to everyone, but we do more with our Facebook account to update. It is our way to connect to most of you and let you into our missionary life. Not only that, but also into our life as a family. We thank you for communicating back to us with your comments, with your likes, and even direct messages. It it encourages us to know you are listening and you care. Sometimes a picture speaks more than a paragraph. If you have been our mission partners for many years, my children have practically grew in your own eyes through our photos and updates. You may have witnessed their struggles or their active participation in this ministry. In a nutshell, during pandemic, we saw our only son, Eli, got married. I thank God for giving me two children, Eli and Isha, a son and a daughter, both now grown up. Eli, he always take to heart what we advise him with. When he was in the seminary, My wife jokingly told him one day, you cannot date until or until you get a job to pay for your dinner date. And through those five years in college, he never even dated once. So we were wondering why he never even introduced any girl to us. And his reply was, I cannot date because you told me not to until I get to pay for my date. He finally found a girlfriend, a fine young lady who was saved from our campus ministry and became a faithful youth leader in our church. And for, I think, four years, they have been on. I heard of wedding plans. But, of course, they don't have much savings, so it was just that, a plan. You see, weddings in the Philippines cost a lot because people come even if they are not invited. So if you are planning for a wedding with 50 guests, that number will triple on the actual day. Your relatives, neighbors will hear about it and would invite themselves, even the people in your village. So imagine how expensive that is for the food and men. Filipinos are not satisfied with just a cake or a glass of juice. They want to see real food like a whole roast pig. But when pandemic happened, 
there were strong restrictions imposed by our government. You cannot gather a group of more than 50. So I told my son, if you want to get married with a limited budget, now is the time. <laughs> and again, he heeded our advice. Eli and Grace got married in a small hotel in, the, in a city an hour away from our town with only 50 people present. And of course, both sides of their family understood why they can have more guests. It was a beautiful wedding that I got to solemnize. Today, Grace delivered our first grandson. Last Saturday, December 2. They said she is delivering December 13, but she delivered earlier. So people are asking me, how does it feel to have a grandson? I said, I don't know. I haven't been there yet. Uh, maybe Lisa can tell you. And uh, they prayed for a baby boy, and God gave them one. Please pray for them. Eli is my assistant pastor. He handles the youth, the music, the worship program, and the technical side of running a church service. How he does that? You have to see him come up and down that stairs from the sound room to the stage back and forth. And I wouldn't know how to go about those things if God has not given me a worker who happens to be my son. Because I'm an old school. I don't do much of that technology now. But uh, he is planning also to plant another church next year, which is next to our town. We have started that mission work when pandemic happened. Isha, my only daughter, has been blessed to enter a public school. It means she gets a better paying teaching job of $500 every month, as opposed to $100 if you are teaching in a private school in the Philippines. You work there for eight hours in a day, you get a salary of 8 to $12. She still handles the children's ministries of the church and helps in the discipleship group of the teen girls in the church. She is praying to get married to her longtime boyfriend soon, also a pastor, but until we give them the blessing. It is always difficult to let go of a daughter. And uh, you can pray for your missionaries like us more effectively. There's a verse in Romans 12, 13. It says, distributing to the necessity of saints given to hospitality. Share with God's people who need help. Look for people who need help and welcome them into your homes. I thank God for people who welcome me and my wife into their homes or made sure we get a comfortable accommodation every time we visited. It was always a good story to share to our people as they listen in awe. You have no idea how much comfort you have here that most of our people have never even imagined. But even if you didn't, because obviously I can't be in all places in such a short time, your prayers, your gestures of love, it means a lot. You know what? Prayers really work. Even if the answer from God was a no, it still works. Lisa felt really bad. She can join me this time. For some reason... God didn't grant her a visa. I was not keen on coming back without my wife. We have always been a team. It is hard for me to travel alone and drive she, because she was my navigator. My strategies on where to go next. She was my shock absorber. But God sees ahead. He has a reason. Lisa is my prayer warrior. I may be here alone, but she helps me a lot. Online. So if you want to reach me while I am on the road, just send a message on my messenger and Lisa will dare to update me. So we, your church, you as our friend and partner, and us, the Eisen, we are connected. Continue to pray for us as your missionary uh, family. Earlier I said, we went to the battlefield 
barely with ammunitions to spare. We did it by faith. If David had that courage to fight a giant, we can too. But we know he didn't fight alone all the time. He was later joined by his most loyal soldiers and friends. Three prominent ones were Abishai, Maniah, and Uriah. Fully sending and supporting a missionary communicates. Missions is spiritual warfare. And we've got your back. We thank our Abishais. We thank our Banayas. We thank our Urias. Because when you fully, fully send and support a missionary, it's much easier for them to raise the support they need for their basic needs. And even for special needs as they arise. And this not only creates a stronger bond between the members and the missionary, but it also makes it much easier to meet the need itself. We have needs in the mission fields. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For how else would you know, would you know your missionary's burden if he does not share? When someone was ill in the family, for our vacation Bible school needs, our youth camp, when we were flooded and people could not go out to work for those times that we asked even when we didn't and just quietly prayed, for those who gave and prayed that others would give, thank you. I came to present a huge need. At first, I thought, if I could challenge 20 churches, 20 individuals, who would be willing to give or pledge $3,000, then we, can, we could start building the two-story project for the youth and for the children. But then I thought myself, is that really faith? Why limit God and what he can do through people I would meet? Why put a minimum or a ceiling? So today, tonight, my challenge for you is to help us on whatever amount the Lord is leading you to. And I know the Lord will bless that and multiply. I've been here for uh, two months and one week. You are my last schedule for prayer meeting. God has given me 13200 for that project, but I'm praying for 60,000, but God has given me only 13,200, plus your gift you've collected last Sunday, so that's 14,000. Uh, and I'm praying to the Lord uh, because this is his work, this is his ministry, that's not really my, my problem, it's his problem, but it's, nothing is too hard for the Lord. I believe the Lord will supply that through people like you and churches uh, like you. And... Uh, we have been praying for this project five years ago, and frankly, we need this building for our children and youth. It is not an extra, but a necessity. I hope you feel our burden to have this desperately. And we have so much to do, so limited resources. I stand here to tonight while my family and our people are praying that my presence here in front of you will not land on deaf ears. Here is my display board. I am praying that before, our, before you go home tonight, you get a copy of our new prayer card so that you can always pray for us. And with me is the representation of our building too for our youth and our children, that birdhouse. That birdhouse has a little hole in it. It's a hungry birdhouse. It will accept cents and dollars. It will also accept checks. If you don't know the spelling of my name when you are giving a check, please leave it blank. If you don't know how much to give, leave it blank too. <laughs> I'm going to fill that for you. Uh, but everything that I collect from, from every church that I go to, I add that. And so we have that 13200 plus your 800 so I have 14000 now. But if the Lord has 
uh, has blessed your heart and you're encouraged tonight to still help us with our ministry. Everything you put there will go to our building project. I'm praying that when I come home, I'm going back Wednesday, uh, next week, and we are praying that by January, God has provided that money and we are going to start building for our children and for our youth. We have more than 500 children. We don't bring them to church because we don't have a place for them. Uh, we don't have air conditioning. You've seen our church, uh, we only have ceiling fans and hand fans. It's 70 to 100. When we sit, we sit like uh, sardines. Uh, we are full. We are planning to have one or two services uh, next year because we are really full at our church, and it's a growing ministry. Well, that's your work. And if you give to this ministry, that's, an, that's not an investment for a lifetime. It's an eternal investment. I'm, I'm telling uh, some of your men here that someday when the Lord will call us home, you will be surprised. There will be brown people lining behind your back. You don't know them. They're Filipinos. But they're there behind you because you've prayed for that ministry, you've supported that, you've invested in that ministry. You can all be there, but I still encourage our young ones, if you have time, please come and visit us. Eat the food we eat. We eat rice three times a day. For a Filipino, it's not a complete food without rice. And so I love American food. I don't like rice. Uh, while I am here, I'm enjoying your food. But I am thankful to the Lord for the opportunity just to be here and encourage your hearts with our ministry. Only God can put that burden in your hearts. Thank you, thank you for giving me this time. Thank you, Brother Blanche, for your leadership and the church. To God alone be the glory, great things. Yes, Dan. You might want to uh, ask some questions. I can answer that for you before we close. But that's the whole of my presentation. Yes. I would love to come if we could ever work at Ellie. How would you be wishing to contact you to set up a time to. Yes. Uh, in, in our uh, prayer card, we have our Facebook there. So it's an active Facebook. Yeah, you can communicate with us. And then Lisa will just talk to you. And next year, we will have again our vacation Bible school. And uh, we are praying for more children. And of course, when we have that, we need to have more budget. And uh, we love to have you there uh, help us teaching these kids. You don't need an interpreter. Uh, people there can understand you because we learn English from grade school to college, we learn English grammar. That's why when I'm talking to you as an American and there's a Filipino, there's an other Filipino listening, I must be very, very careful with my grammar because he will check me if I use the wrong grammar. So they might not be fluent in speaking English, but when you come, they will understand you. Even our little kids, uh, they can understand you. So come and invest and see the ministry that you are praying and supporting. Yes. So through Facebook. Thank you for your faithful support. We are receiving that every month. Uh, you are not missing it. Thank you. Uh, that's a big help uh, for all of us. Any other else? Oh, uh, Lisa, you know, she's diabetic. But she is healthier now than before. They remove uh, the insulin that she is taking in, and they change it to Ozempic. You know that Ozempic thing, but it's very expensive. It's hard to find in the Philippines because not only the diabetics are using it, but those people who would like to lose weight are t taking Ozempic. Uh, so uh, she is healthier now than before. Uh, because of the, the medicine she is now taking and less than the insulin. Uh, uh, she was not able to get a visa because in 2016 we were here and then in 2017 we have to renew our, our visa. And in, in the computer of the U.S. Embassy in the Philippines, there's a question, questionnaire there that if your answer to all these questions is checked, you have not violated any uh, laws in America, it's all checked, then you don't have to go to Manila, which is five hours away from us, 
that is the capital of the Philippines. You don't have to go to the U.S. Embassy for interview. Uh, just uh, send it to Dropbox. So we did it in 2017. And then after a week, our visa, our passport came back. They have given me another 10 years. So my visa will be until 2027. But they have asked Lisa to report the next, the following week. So we did. We went to the U.S. Embassy. And uh, after the interview, uh, the, the, the cons or during the interview, the, the consul said, you have a wrong visa. And she said, how, how come we have a wrong visa? We are using this for 10 years already. And of course, they have reasons so you don't uh, argue with people in the U.S. Embassy so that you will not be blacklisted. And so this year again, after five years, she tried to, to apply again. So we went to Manila. And the same reason, they said, the consul said, uh, you have a wrong visa. And so she said, we are planning to go back to the United States this time. My husband has a visa. So the consul opened the, and yeah, your husband has a visa. And so Lisa said, uh, will, be, will he be having a problem entering the United States by you telling us that we have a wrong visa? And he just looked at her, did not say anything. And so when I'm coming here, I ask our people, please pray that when I enter America in, in Atlanta, uh, they will not send me back home because I've spent 1900 for my round-trip ticket. And so I arrived there. I'm nervous, but I'm praying to the Lord. And then here comes the immigration officer. He said, are you here for vacation? I did not say anything. I just nod. And then he gave me back the passport. He gave me six months. So that means our visa is valid. Uh, but they have reasons. And so some of our friends are joking us. You need to go to Texas or Mexico and just enter there at the border. <laughs> but, but, that's, uh, but that's the way it is uh, that we have. Okay. Any other else? If not... Uh, I would like to close by saying this from my heart. Living Epistle Baptist Church, indeed, in the Philippines, is the extension of First Baptist Church, New Orton. When you go there, uh, people knew you. When you go to the Philippines as an American, you are our hero. Uh, people will um, treat you as, as heroes, not only because of what did General Douglas MacArthur did when he liberated us from the Japanese during the World War II. Uh, but because after the World War II, here came American missionaries. They brought the gospel of Jesus Christ. We were the fruits of their ministry. We are not competing with American missionaries. We are continuing what you have started. And uh, let me encourage you to continue to pray for us and invest in that ministry, because indeed, that is our ministry. Again, thank you very much for this time. Thank you for coming. I know it's cold, and I know you're hungry, perhaps you're tired, but thank you for enduring uh, and uh, putting up with me tonight. It's indeed a privilege to be here. Let me close in prayer. Father, thank you for allowing me to come to New Walton uh, safely, Thank you for providing for my needs. Thank you for the generosity of these people that in spite of me, uh, not still here, last Sunday, they have collected special offerings for the ministry. Continue to bless them, their father, and continue to encourage their hearts that uh, indeed uh, the, our work is their work as well. Thank you for we have this partnership. Thank you because we have... Uh, people like them who are holding our lifeline. And as I go back their Father, in the Philippines next week, I'm continually praying that you are going to provide for our financial need for that two-story building for our youth and our children. And uh, nothing is impossible to you. We just entrust to you everything. That's your work. That's your ministry. And if it is your will, you're going to provide. Thank you for these people we have, uh, that have come tonight. And as we go home, uh, make us safe. Give us a good night's nice rest. Renew our strength for tomorrow's work. Always help us to be uh, faithful and uh, 
uh, always be appreciative of the blessings that you are showing and giving us every day. We are proud of the six with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Good evening, and God bless you each one.